give some background, um, here's a brief compilation of our previous projects. The motivation of the paper is that we met at the workshop and kind of realized that gravity is the common denominator for our work, at least these projects. So um, our main point is that the role of gravity is becoming more complex as games and entertainment uh, grow from uh, seated to standing and ultimately all other modalities of balancing and moving. And of course gravity and simulated physics have been around in games at least since Space War. What is new that in movement-based games and nature games, real gravity affects the player that, and that's something we don't really understand well enough. And so this is a, an essay or argument paper uh, structured about around this kind of table. So we first define three domains of interaction, digital or uh, artificial, physical or real, and mixed reality, something that combines both digital and physical elements. And then we define five facets of gravity, realism, affect, challenge, movement diversity, and social reading. And in this talk, I'll populate the table with these examples. And our goal is to inform future design, to think uh, and understand what kind of new experiences could we create if we, for example, combine existing digital and physical work in novel ways. Let's start with the facet of realism. Like I said, uh, simulated gravity and physics have been around in games, at least since Space 4. And games also have a long tradition of non-realistic, exaggerated physics and jumps and so on. On the other hand, in the real world, anti-gravity harnesses like this are common in rehab, but also in entertainment. And there's a variety of other equipment like power stilts, trampolines here embedded to a volleyball field. And here's a more extreme example of indoor skydiving. And here we see Floyd Miller getting to an indoor skydiving simulator in Finland. So we did this research trip. <laughs> And there's uh, Ritz and Reinen waiting for their turn. And here's our instructor showing off. <laughs> and uh, in my group, we've been experimenting with boosting movement in both digital and real worlds with the trampoline games. So gravity can be manipulated in both digital and physical domains, and there's some initial work in combining both approaches. <coughs> Next, the facet of affect and emotions. Our overcoming gravity is central to many power fantasies, and for example, David Borgwell writes about how Hong Kong cinema empowers the viewer through expressive amplification of movement through creative use of editing techniques, trampolines, and so on. Not the jump rope. 
This is the classic example of Cosmos uh, Hong Kong, but inspired by Hong Kong. First jump. You have to let it all go, you know? Fear, doubt, mm -hmm. just be free. <laughs> so, beyond games and movies, thrill experiences such as wingsuiting are another form of gravity induced effect. On the other hand, amusement parks provide thrill rides with no physical risk. Which brings us to the mixed reality domain. This is a recent very cool project where a real roller coaster is combined with an Oculus Rift. And there's also some previous papers on thrill ride, uh, rides and human computer interaction. For example, due to the breath control and real risk of falling, the bronchomatic is quite intimidating. In summary, gravity can contribute at least to both empowerment and thrill. Next up is the facet of challenge. Angry Birds is here because in many physics games, the challenge is to learn to anticipate how bodies move under gravity, for example, of the trajectories of the birds. But what's more interesting is per, uh, perhaps these physics games with simulated humanoid bodies. Controlling such articulated bodies is so stupendously difficult that these games use it for a comic effect. And obviously in real world, uh, most sports include gravity-based challenges of strength, speed, and runs, and so on. But it appears that really intensive strength challenges are not that common in movement-based games. Uh, this was something that was explored in Hanging Up a Bar by Floyd So in summary, gravity can provide meaningful challenges, but not all of them are equally common in movement-based games. Our fourth facet is movement diversity. This is something that I'm really passionate about. So here I'm showing Quop again, as it's a great example of how the complexity of the human body, together with gravity, results in highly diverse movement. A creative exploration of that diversity is what many movement arts and sports are about. For example, parkour. Let's have a look. Here, the uh, diversity was achieved through creative use of different support, so support surfaces and structures, so the environment, the physical environment. And here's another example of using the floor and walls creatively. So this kind of fake people. In mixed reality, uh, or augmented reality, uh, we have been exploring what's possible and meaningful if we are interacting on a wall instead of a floor. So in summary, the complexity of human body together with gravity can yield highly diverse movement, especially if one utilizes the physical in environment creatively. Now for our last facet of sociality. There are many physics games where uh, people must collaborate to solve problems, for example one player hanging from a chain to enable some other player to do something. And I guess this is not that different from activities like cheerleading, where teams of athletes compete uh, to overcome, uh, or collaborate to co overcome gravity. However, social mixed reality gravity experiences are something that we don't know yet much about. Haptic Turk from <laughs> Clive Audien is one of the rare examples. And here's another example of multiplayer diverse movement in the real world. And bounding is a great example that applies this kind of body mechanics. Uh, with technology, so two bodies entangled through a shared mobile device. So
So now we've kind of com completed our table of examples. Now to conclude, um, I'll briefly summarize what we think about the future of all this. Considering realism, it's clear that there are many environments, like the indoor skydiving, that are underexplored and could be augmented digitally and could be further empowered digitally. We also need more research about the effects of such experiences on players. In our work, we have some initial evidence that digital empowerment increases player arousal and one can still learn movement, even if the visuals are not realistic. Um, considering challenge and diversity, we predict that there will be more high-intensity and non-standing movement experiences, for example, through augmentation of real-world sport environments. I guess what we want to say is that movement-based games with predominantly standing movement are highly limited and there's so much more to explore. However, um, Non-standing movement could also be explored in more smaller spaces. For example, one could combine this floor movement with controlling a pop character with all limbs, so you lie down on your back. And uh, this is also something because uh, in quop you control the limbs of the character directly, and that's very difficult. <laughs> Incidentally, that's something also that the animation and the robotics communities have been working on. So now we are getting to a point where physics-based characters can improvise movement based on goals, like here, get on top of that ball. So we think that uh, it might be uh, possible to combine this with bodily interaction, for example, in bonded style. Considering socialism, we have more questions than confident predictions. I guess the basic question is, what collaborative or competitive experiences does gravity enable or prevent? Considering the other facets, do gravity, uh, gravity manipulating techniques work for one or multiple players? How do other people perceive them? For example, is the empowerment of trail mediated? In the paper, we suggest more questions um, to form this kind of matrix, systematically considering all the facet pairs. The questions together with this table form a framework that can be utilized both as an analytical and exploratory design tool. In the paper, uh, we demonstrate this by designing and testing a simple novel game, and also by utilizing the questions to suggest improvements to an existing design. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go into details in this talk. We thought that the best way to support that kind of paper is to focus on giving many visual examples. But Joe here uh, can demonstrate our uh, body flip game uh, in the evening, in the reception, if somebody's interested. So with this, I conclude my talk, and I will leave this table here if somebody has questions. <laughs> so. Thank you. Okay, we have time. We have time for questions. Who will be the first one? There, in that corner. Hi, I'm Heather. I'm an industry person um, who does game analytics. And I'm fascinated by this first visual analysis, but I'm kind of wanting to take the next step about categorizing the different ways in which mixed reality might um, combine and manipulate the affordances of the situation. Um, um, do I need to read your paper? <laughs> or could you, is there some summary you can offer? Uh, there's, uh, yeah, I of course left out a lot of details, but that's also something that we are kind of pointing out for uh, directions for future work and we are only in the beginning ourselves as well. So well, I look forward to learning more about it. It's really yeah. interesting. Thank you. Okay. Another question? Really? <laughs> I could um, comment myself. 
uh, <laughs> because we have some time left. So. Yeah, I, I just. Uh,